insects undergo internal fertilization. This means that the union of sperm and egg occurs within the female after the sperm has been deposited in or near her reproductive tract by the male copulatory organs. Internal fertilization is a major adaptation for terrestrial life in insects because it protects gametes, the reproductive cells, from harsh external conditions. Reproduction through internal fertilization usually requires courtship behaviors that lead to mating, as well as sophisticated and compatible reproductive systems. To achieve this, insects have evolved some curious behaviors and unusual adaptations to ensure that they can locate a suitable mate and successfully reproduce. In this video, we focus on these insect mate finding and courtship behaviors. Before an insect begins courting, it must first identify and locate suitable mates. Communication between the sexes is usually achieved through the use of reliable signals to which the other responds. These can include visual signals, auditory cues, or pheromone secretions for chemical communication. A pheromone is a chemical signal that, when received, alters the behavior or physiology of conspecifics. Pheromones are often produced and released by animals for communication purposes. Many insects signal mating availability to the other sex with chemical signals called sex pheromones. Although chemical communication is the most common method employed by insects for finding mates, many insects use visual or auditory cues to locate a partner. Cicadas and various orthopterans are good examples of insects that sing to advertise their location to prospective mates. Males are usually the ones who conduct the potentially costly behavior of singing. This can be dangerous because broadcasting the location of the singer can alert parasitoids and maybe predators that might be attracted to these auditory signals. A male's song can indicate his reproductive fitness to the female. For example, female crickets tend to prefer mating with larger males, possibly because these males have advantageous genes, which allow greater foraging and survival skills in their offspring. Since large male crickets produce low-pitched chirps, females can gauge male attractiveness through their songs. Visual cues play an important part in mate finding in some species. Butterflies, for instance, use visual cues to find potential mates. Wing markings and flight patterns can act as reliable indicators that butterflies use to identify members of the same species for mating. Another visual cue used in sexual communication is bioluminescence. Fireflies, which are actually beetles and not flies, use flashes of light to signal to the opposite sex. Each species uses distinctive patterns of light flashes, almost like a visual Morse code, to identify and communicate with each other in the dark. Sometimes insects can hijack this visual communication system. Some species of female fireflies impersonate females of other species by mimicking their flashing patterns. This allows them to lure in unsuspecting males of that species, which they subsequently capture and eat. Now that's ingenious. Once an insect has located a potential mate, they may engage in elaborate courtship behaviors that eventually lead to copulation and gamete transfer. Male insects and other arthropods often use a variety of strategies, such as displays, dances, and even gifts to impress females. The dances that some male insects perform to charm female partners can include complex aerial acrobatics to show off their reproductive fitness. Some male insects have evolved elaborate physical characteristics in the adult stage that make them more attractive to females. For example, male rhinoceros beetles have exaggerated horns on their thorax and head in the hopes of capturing the female's attention. 
The size of the horns can indicate the male's fitness and overall health because it takes a lot of nutrients and energy to produce these ornaments. Generally, the larger the horn, the more attractive the male appears to the female. So in this case, size really does matter. In addition, the horns can be used in combat between males to win the female's favor. Male competition for access to females does not always have to end in a fight. For instance, male stock-eyed flies will compare the width of their inflated eye stalks against each other to determine their relative size and fitness. Males with smaller eyes will usually yield to the larger males, allowing the latter to mate with the available females. Courtship, as with mate finding, can also be achieved through chemical communication. Males can entice females into mating by releasing courtship pheromones that are sometimes referred to as aphrodisiacs, chemicals that stimulate sexual receptivity. Some male tiger moths, for example, have eversible organs that produce and release chemicals which enhance female receptivity. These also provide an honest indication of the amount of a protective alkaloid chemical a male has available to pass to the female with his sperm. The more of these compounds the female receives, the more protection there is for the eggs she will produce. Female tiger moths are therefore able to assess male fitness and choose mates based on courtship pheromone signals. In many insects, courtship behaviors are based on a combination of cues. When insects use more than one type of communication method, it is referred to as multimodal communication. Butterflies display using multimodal communication in which both chemical and visual cues play critical roles in courtship. Male butterflies not only perform aerial dances to show off their virility, but also release aphrodisiac chemical signals in courtship. Another way a male may convince a female to mate with him is to offer her a nuptial gift. This is typically a food item transferred to the female during courtship. Nuptial gifts facilitate successful mating in several ways. First, they can provide the female with the means of evaluating the fitness of a pursuing male by assessing the quality of his gift. Alternatively, the nuptial gift may serve as a tool that the male employs to distract the female long enough for successful sperm transfer to occur. The nuptial gifts often provide additional nutrition to the female for egg production. In many members of the order Orthoptera, which includes grasshoppers and crickets, the gifts are offered as a package known as a spermatophylax. This package contains nutrients and a packet of sperm. The sperm packet is called a spermatophore. In some predatory insects, like hanging flies, males present captured prey as nuptial gifts to the female. Females may reject males if the gift does not meet their standards. A nuptial gift can even be the male offering himself as a nutrient source. You may have heard of sexual cannibalism occurring in praying mantises. Granted, in these cases, the sacrifice by the males is involuntary. Some male spiders, however, appear to make no effort to avoid being eaten by their female partner. Perhaps this selfless sacrifice is the male spider's way of contributing to the health of his offspring, providing the embryos with additional nutrients for development. Research indicates that this paternal sacrifice evolved more often in species in which individuals within a population are far apart and less likely to encounter each other. It is therefore more advantageous for these males to provide their mate with additional nutrition to enhance offspring survival, since they are unlikely to mate again. You may have noticed, as we covered insect mate finding and courtship behaviors, that it is often the males that invest more effort into courting females. This is partly due to the different amounts of energy each sex invests into offspring production. 
Because the eggs produced by females are much larger and richer in nutrients than sperm, females expend much more energy into gamete production. Males, on the other hand, generally have minimal direct investment in their offspring, as sperm production does not require a large energetic investment. Furthermore, some females may carry the eggs for a period of time, providing the offspring with some parental care. As such, males tend to be more promiscuous, while females are more selective. This is why males often have to actively court the females. Now that we've examined insect mate finding and courtship behavior, what about the reproductive structures involved in gamete transfer? Stick around to learn all about those in the next video.